Hey there, Sharon Hernell's here. Welcome to day 97 of the Let's Grow Annual Challenge. We're working on our physical growth, our physical well-being, physical environment, anything physical about our life in the areas that we want to grow. Today we're going to do one of my favorite exercises. Uh, it's called the Seven Whys exercise. It used to be the Five Whys until uh, my friend Dean Graciosi, Graciosi, Dean Graciosi, love the Italian, uh, was at a mastermind. I, I think it was one of those hundred thousand dollars, six figure plus masterminds, and I don't remember who he learned it from. But whoever was teaching that day taught the technique of instead of just going five wise deep, going seven wise deep when you have a question. So today we are going to ask ourselves a question like, and I'll run through mine because I just ran through it. Every time I run through this, I learn something new about myself or something that's still stuck that I need to deal with. And that's what happened today. And so I just ran through this and I'm going to share mine quickly to see if it's helpful and show that. There's incredible power in asking yourself why. And I say seven plus why, because sometimes it takes eight or nine or 10 whys to actually get down to the root cause of what's going on with us. The root emotion, the root experience that happened that we still haven't let go of or, or get over, which is what I discovered today. I think I, I thought I've gotten over this, but apparently I haven't because it came up in this exercise today. Uh, so what we're going to do is ask ourselves, why do we want to have physical growth? And what will happen is whatever is most important to you will pop into your head and you'll start thinking down that line. Maybe it's diet or nutrition. Maybe you've had a health scare or a health challenge or a disease that's going on. Whatever's most important to you will come up. And then you ask yourself, well, why is that? And you do that seven times and you come up with some of the most enlightening things and the most incredible information about yourself that you never really realize. At least that's what happens to me as I go through it. Because I said, I learned the five why exercise probably from Tony Robbins, I'm guessing, back in the 1980s or early 1990s. Might have been from a different, you know, guru or coach or mentor. I don't remember anymore. The older you get, the more you everything merges together as you've used it and made it your own and you forget where it actually came from. But I'm thinking that's like an NLP Tony Robbins kind of thing. Could be wrong. Could be, you know, could have been Jim Rohn. Could have been Napoleon Hill. I don't know. I've had so many mentors and so many coaches over the decades. It's hard to keep track of what came from who. And I'm sure I've got it written down somewhere in notes, but since my eyes aren't very good anymore, I don't go back and look at and try to decipher, even with magnifying glasses, the stuff that I've written down in the past. It just is, it is what it is and it is in the past. But those exercises that I continue to use today, I use because they're powerful. I do like to go back every once in a while and find something that I've forgotten about that's an incredible technique that I want to make sure that I share with people because it had an impact on me. Maybe I'm not using it right now, but it was really powerful to get me over a hump back in the past sometime. Like Opo Ono, I was talking about that the other day with, uh, actually it was about a, three weeks ago now with my uh acupuncturist and she said well have you ever heard of that I'm like well of course I had but it was the third time it came up in like a two-day period so I knew it was something I needed to revisit and so we will definitely cover that sometime this year so seven why exercise how do you do it first thing you do and I'm going to share mine since I just did it is I ask myself what it, okay what is it that I want what's my desire what do I want to ask a question about what do I want to know more about and I will tell you I have learned over the decades of my existence that asking why things happen or why other people do things is a complete and utter waste of time but asking ourselves why we do think believe or behave in a certain way is some of the most powerful things that we can do to help make our life the way we want it to be so our why today mine was why do i want to grow physically why do i want to have physical growth and my answer was so that i can be healthy and strong well, why do I want to be healthy and strong? That's my second why. And I said, so that I can do what I want. Well, why do I want to do what I want? Because much of my life, I didn't believe that I had control over deciding what I wanted to do and choosing what I wanted to do. I felt that others, and, I, and so why did I not feel like I could do what I want and that I had control? And here's the biggie, because I let I gave permission to and gave away my personal power and let other people choose and decide and some cases manipulate, some cases just influence, some cases domineer, some in, in different levels of control, but I let that happen. I 
have to take personal responsibility for the part of that that I could control, can control, or could have control. Uh, and so why did I let others control me? And I said, because I was afraid. Well, why was I afraid? Because I didn't know what was going to happen or if I could handle it. I didn't, you know, that I had a fear of what would happen if I made a change in certain situations uh, and would I be able to deal with all of the consequences of that? I was afraid. Why? Uh, why was I afraid of not being able to control things or handle what was going to happen? And that's my seventh why, but it was because of past experiences that I'd had, past experiences I had made choices to get myself involved in that were not good for me, were not for me, they were definitely against me. And it wasn't until uh, I had a huge health challenge that made me actually take action. And I was then over the fear of what would happen. And I knew that I survived that big thing. And by surviving that big thing, I knew no matter what the world dished out to me, I would be able to handle it and I would be able to control it. And so I still obviously have some of that baggage inside of me and things that I'm afraid of that I need to let go of. I need to, number one, forgive myself for not taking action in the past because there's nothing we can do to change what happened in the past or what we did in the past or the experiences that we had in the past. They are part of who we are, but it doesn't mean we have to let them control us. We can decide to take the lessons from those experiences and then move forward and, and make it our life different, make it the way we want it to be. So that's just a quick example. And like I said, that's something I thought I'd let go of a long, long time ago, but apparently I have not. So I need to do some work with that. I'll probably journal on it today and, and realize that, again, just remind myself. Sometimes we just have to remind ourselves that the past is the past. We cannot change it. The only time we can change or impact anything is right now, which is part of why this exercise is so powerful. It shows us things on a conscious level that we're probably controlling us and running little programs on the inside of us in our subconscious that we're not even aware of. And that impacts what we're even able to see as possibilities for ourselves. So we want to eliminate those. So what's our action item today? Ask yourself a series of seven whys. Why do you want physical growth? And then see what comes up and ask yourself seven times and try to get down to, I know what the root experiences are. I'm not going to share them, but I know what they are and were and why I made the choices and decisions. I did it at the time because we always do the best we can with what we've got right now. And that means we always make the best choice or decision in the moment, given our level of emotional engagement, given our level of experience, given everything, given our resources, given our mental capacity to handle stress, et cetera. We always make the best choice for us at the time. Now, it doesn't mean a second later or 30 seconds later that wasn't a bad choice. It just means the second that we made that decision and choice, it was best for us. At least overall, our ego and our uh, security, sense of security and everything else thought it was the best at the time. Now, that's why we go back and revisit and we say, okay, what else could I have done? What lesson can I learn from that? Because obviously I made that choice, thought it was best, but it here's what the consequences were. Turns out it wasn't the best decision, right? So that's our exercise for today. If I can help you with that in any way, hit me up. There's, of course, a write-up about it in Guide 2 of our Let's Grow Annual Challenge private Facebook group page, as well as, uh, oh, who story did I put in her? Faith story today, running through the 7Y exercise. Uh, also, in the Get Up and Go Challenge private Facebook group page, there are at least probably a dozen or more examples of the seven why exercise for different areas and aspects of our life. And at least a couple of those are with physical well-being, physical goals, etc. Not physical growth, but isn't physical growth, physical goals? Hmm, very similar. All right, that's it. Have an awesome day. And I will, of course, be with you tomorrow.